My name is Tarek Barwani. I'm the Chief Operation Officer of um, Plenty. My name is Mohammed Bin Yahya. I'm the co-founder and CEO of the company. Plenty is a tea bar where you come in and we make you teas from scratch uh, based on the moods and the mindset that you try to achieve or transform. I like doing a lot of the nuts and bolts in terms of like getting the operational stuff going. I, I kind of like the execution part of it too, you know. I am more of the visionary. I am the dreamer and I like to focus on the creative side of the company. We grew up in that culture. It's a very tea influenced culture. So it started from there. And uh, when we looked up uh, the culture here and we, we found out that it's a coffee based and we realized that it's also because of the lack of the experience in tea and, and how it's been made. We, we came up with uh, different drinks that in a way, uh, they're as rich as the coffee drinks here. So people who appreciate coffee would definitely appreciate something like that. We got into, uh, into it a little deeper on how it can really be good for you and how it transforms you in a, in a way. From the name, right, uh, it's, it's about having more options. There's a lot of kind of teas, a lot of kind of blends that we do. To, uh, in the shop so we've kind of like broke it down even into certain moods and mindsets that you like to achieve when you come uh, to plenty we know teas can be drunk for so many different things like i mean growing up there's teas for stomach aches teas for toothache teas for like if you're sleepy people come in and it's, it's great because they'll come in like you know like either like kind of like down or like angry or something and then they'll leave all like a big smile like oh man that tea was awesome made me feel this way right so that's why we have making you patterns there as part of our logo in the sense that you know um, we want you to make new patterns you know, we want you to f come in figure you know f tell me tell us how you feel and we'll figure out the perfect tea to make you transform to your mood or create a new pattern for you. I was born in Abu Dhabi, so about an hour away from Dubai. I moved to Canada in 2001, so I first moved here from University of Calgary. I lived in Calgary for about 9-10 years, graduated, worked there for a bit, went back to Abu Dhabi, lived there for about 3 years, and I moved here, yeah, about 5 years ago, 2013. I was born uh, in um Dubai, United Arab Emirates. Then I went to university in Calgary. I was 17 when I first came to Canada. I finished my engineering degree and then I went back to Dubai. And then I decided to come here uh, almost five years ago now. Initially, actually, it's funny. I didn't actually think about coming to Canada. My first move, I was thinking of either going to the UK or to the US. I definitely was heading more geared towards the US just because, honestly, it's just because of TV. I just so happened to meet two people who are pretty influential in bringing me up here. One of them was my high school advisor, who was Canadian, and he kept, you know, batting for coming down to Canada. And uh, so the first batch of university I applied to was out east in uh, Ontario. I just happened to get into Calgary. The second time, it only felt natural to actually come back here and uh, relive, you know, uh, continue and pick up to where I left off. So the first reason I came is because of my engineering degree. I was very influenced by my uncle. He's a, a very well uh, established person back home and uh, he told me to go to Calgary and finish uh, in the engineering so I can work in the oil and gas. I ended up uh, just working there as an engineer and I thought to myself that there is more I can do. And given the fact that I spent a lot of years here and I felt uh, more comfortable coming back and starting uh, business here. The first time I came here, honestly, I was 17, so I just wanted to escape. I mean, sure, I'm gonna have a degree, that's cool, <laughs> but I was thinking about the lifestyle, right? I'm gonna come and have a good time. Now, the second time, it was a little more mature thinking, you know, so I was coming in with a more mature thinking of advancing myself in my career. I mean, I lived here for long enough to know what to expect, but I knew you had to work hard, but I know when you do work and you work towards a goal, I know that you can achieve it. I knew it wasn't gonna be, okay, I'll step in the country, okay, there you go, you know, I think the doors are open, no, no. But I know that nobody's gonna lock the door for you, you just have to go knock, put your foot in the door, bang, but it will open, you know, so that's, that's, that's what I know from my experience. When you first come in, you have the mindset of coming to a place where it's very diverse and people from all over the world, they, uh, they move to a, to a city that 
has great potential, you know, in growth. But uh, I think when you when you come here and you start getting into that uh, entrepreneurial spirit and uh, work, you uh, realize that you have to really understand how people think here. It's still true that uh, it's very diverse, but I believe there is still a culture, one united culture in the city that you have to understand and adapt and then uh, work your way from there. You, you know, it's good to be proud of your culture, but at the same time, you have to be very uh, aware of what's around you, what's the norm in, 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 the, in the society or in the neighborhood and you, you, you try to blend in. We've traveled a lot uh, and you know, we've met a lot of different kind of people, uh, but still that's not enough because uh, you, you still will find a challenge on um, how to integrate uh, a product or an idea into a specific kind of mindset of people. For me, when it came down to challenges of moving over here to Canada, this, uh, I'd say I almost I divided it into two phases, right? The first phase when I first came here when I was younger, the challenge mostly was, honestly it was interesting because even though um, I spoke, you know, I spoke English, I still c had to adapt to the Canadian, let's say, culture and slang. I still, t it still took me like almost a whole semester to understand what the prof was saying, you know what I mean? I, and what people around me were saying. Thankfully, I got good advice from my, one of my uncles that, who, who, lived, um, who lived here before. Go out there, open, meet a lot of people, understand the culture. Don't forget where you're from, as Muhammad said, like you have to be proud where you're from but understand you're in a new place you know what i mean you have to understand that you have you i made the choice to come here no one begged me to come here no one flew me here no one like you know i made the choice so you have to make the choice to to adapt to what's around you now the second time um, coming in i think the most challenging thing was of course you know i lived out west i understood the western culture the western it, it is different from the eastern side for sure so coming out east is like especially toronto's fast paced quick boom boom you know as soon as i stepped out the airport i'm like whoa it's like all this energy i'm like <laughs> i wanted to go back inside and like take a breath you know really it's like a lot of energy that wasn't really uh, really really used to i'm okay this is where i'm going to be living now and that assimilation is challenging because sometimes you may have to forego a few bits and pieces of you right but you shouldn't forgo but but I, I believe I, I haven't foregone like the essentials of who I am. You know what I mean? There's some bits and pieces you can let go when you're assimilating, but the essentials you hold on to. When I was leaving, uh, I was speaking to uh, one of my cousins. She said, you know, they say, don't, don't put all your eggs in one basket. I remember just saying, uh, listen, I only have one and I'm just gonna take it with me. I, I jumped in all in and I believe this is one of the key reasons of why we're here today. So definitely the move of quitting your job and leaving things behind you and moving to a new place with an idea that you're trying to, you know, turn into a reality. I still meet a lot of people today that say, I wish I had the courage to quit my job and, and start something. So I know it's not easy. The journey is, is very interesting because you have to make decisions and sometimes they have to be really quick decisions. From the initial uh, stage of either raising money, coming up with the money, and negotiating a lease, and, and just you know putting things together, these things I didn't really learn in uh, my engineering school. So it was all like self-taught. We don't really have mentors, so it's really something that we use our instinct. Uh, it's a long term, like this is something that you signed up, this is going to be your life. I'm definitely happy that I made the choice to leave the, the work that I had, even though it was very comfortable, right? It was very comfortable, it was providing a good lifestyle and people thought it was nuts, right? I mean, my parents, they supported me. Of course, they look out, they were looking out for my best, right? So they wanted me to keep the job, but you know, they support me, right? But people actually all around me, they like, thought I was crazy, right? I, I started a couple of things with other people and I think, uh, I, it it, it kind of opened my eyes up to like be very careful and be very picky about who you work with. You know, like I'm glad that, you know, we don't always see eye to eye. We have different ideas, but I think I learn a lot from him and I compliment each other. Sometimes, you know, it makes me think about things I don't think about, which I'm definitely grateful for. So that's what I'm proud of is that taking that decision to go into the, way of, into the business way of life or into the entrepreneur way of life, it's a responsibility and it, it gives you that knowledge. Okay, you're now you're responsible for yourself. You're starting something, you put all the sweat and tears and hard work, you're not gonna just 
stop here. So it's in this stage that, because we've only been here for three years now, so I think it's still early, but I think the sky is the limit. You know, I literally left like all my family back home, right? I left everybody, I left everything that I was familiar with. I didn't just move, let's say, to Canada just for the sake of just moving and kind of like being okay with being okay, you know what I mean? No. Now that we came here, we really have to do our best to achieve what my goal is, right? Now, what your goal is changes with, with, with time, right? But it's like drives me to think that I don't want to settle just, just to like, okay, now I'm going to come here, settle and not achieve my goals. No, it's, it, it means you come here, you, you, you push yourself, you, you suffer and you sacrifice, but leave your family behind. You have to reach the epitome of what you want to go for. You achieve something and like, honestly, like, it's nice that day. I don't know if, if, if you like that too. It's nice on that day you achieve it. Then the next day I'm like, okay, what's next? <laughs> you know, what's next? You know what I mean? To me, I'm always looking to the next. If I wanted to give an advice, uh, it would be specifically to entrepreneurs. I think uh, they shouldn't fall into the trap of the social media and Instagram and how it shows you life of an entrepreneur is with the nice cars and nice planes and all this stuff. You have to be ready to uh, get your hands dirty and hustle. And in, in the first three to five years, you have to be ready to make it your priority, your life, everything. There's different advice for different ages, age group, to be honest, you know what I mean? I think people coming in when they're younger, I think that they're coming in at the best time of their life, for sure. You coming from tough countries, for example, I'd imagine, you know what I mean? A tough country, tough situation, you're gonna come here, you know, and you see the Canadian life on TV or the news or the info package you get before you come here, and you think it's all gonna be beautiful, but in reality, it's a tough, it's a tough place. So you're gonna come in, it's gonna be busy, People are going to be doing their own thing. People are going to be looking out for themselves. There is the opportunity to go and create and build and build the life that you want. You just have to go out and grab it. I really advise that to get out there, integrate, or spend some time just like getting to know people that are not, doesn't speak your language, people that doesn't come from your background and culture. Get out there and get it go and do it right away. You know, jump in there and get it done. I think that's the best way to come in here and enjoy the best of Canada, I think. My name is Mohammed Binia here. My name is Talk Barwani. And, and we, we didn't, didn't come, come this, this far, far to only come, come this far. far.